the hell are we supposed to use, man? Harsh language. So, episode three of She-Hulk. This episode, we see our girl, Jennifer Walters, and, and she's uh, making a case for Emil Blonsky to be able to get out on parole. Mm, yep. uh, but at the end of last episode, the bombshell got dropped on her case that he technically escaped his prison to go fight with Wong. And uh, <clears throat> the, the uh, I don't know what you even call it, the panel of people making the decisions, they were not, not fans right. of that. And parole board. The parole board, there you go. I couldn't think of it. And they were, uh, they were making the case that he should stay in prison despite his good behavior. He still mm -hmm. technically escaped. Right. And this episode essentially sort of centers around her getting Wong's testimony. And I don't know what his deal is, but <laughs> he was fucking mad late to that hearing. Yeah, he was. Kind of yeah, teleporting inside the prison. No big deal. Yeah, no big deal. Interrupting everything. And at the end, they were trying like, to overrule the goddamn law. And like, at, they were like, hey, technically, you just admitted to a crime. And he's like, yeah, all right, I'm out. Just fucking open this door to go. I know what you're thinking, Miss Walters. When I'm not erasing everyone's memories, not again. Yeah, it's also very messy. So, yeah, I don't know, like, what the deal is there. You know, Marvel always seems to have, like, they're, you know, playing chess, 4D chess with us. Yeah. And stuff that they did, you know, five movies ago will make an appearance again in a show or another movie. But this one didn't feel that way. I don't know. I feel like this was just, like, I don't know. Maybe it's setting up for something bigger, but it feels like in Shang-Chi, that, like, little scene with Wong and Abomination where they were fighting was kind of just, like, a funny little reference to put in the movie yeah that the decision to go back and now include it in this show is sort of like an afterthought but i don't know <laughs> do you feel that way too yeah i think it was i think feige actually admitted he wanted to sink abomination to the bottom of the ocean and instead they put him in this facility so hmm. they'd be able to bring him back so yeah i don't know i still think they're building towards the thunderbolts i know they so they they we saw his seven soulmates in this episode and it was just like a bunch of like hippie women basically old that, as fuck too yeah yeah they all uh, were old and last episode i think i don't know if i mentioned it in the episode or if i mentioned it to you to dusty specifically that uh i had thought and i saw some other people like some of the other like comic book news channels they were suggesting that perhaps his seven soulmates were the seven members of the Thunderbolts. And I sort of agreed with that. And I still kind of do. The reason being is because he, he's, he's referred to them as pen pals and soulmates. And I think mm -hmm. in this episode, he did refer to the women as pen pals as well as soulmates. So yeah. I don't know. Met them through the prison pen pal program. Yeah. That's what he said. So I don't know. I I guess I don't I maybe they squash that dream. Obviously, I think he's still going to end up in the Thunderbolts, but maybe not this way. Um, but he's reformed, Marvin. He's a nice guy now. Well, I'm yeah. sure. Uh, what's her name? Julia Louis Dreyfus will pay him a visit. Yeah, that I think that's probably how they'll end up doing it. Like, hey, dude, like we're putting this team together because the Thunderbolts. They're like you. You yeah. had mentioned once before. Show up and be like, hey, you want to get out of that uh, inhibitor you get? on there to keep you from turning yeah do that for you apparently everybody's got inhibitors now fucking hulk's got one that he invented these guys got one from yeah. the government i don't know um, well blonsky can control abomination now yeah well he needs a new name right it's no longer abomination it's like i don't know fish ears <laughs> yeah uh, you always have the fish ears in like, the, in the comic books yes um, yes okay. that's how they drew him in the movie, the first Hulk movie, he didn't look anything like he, he didn't. looks now. No. Yeah. yeah, that's why I was confused a little bit. Okay. He almost looked a little bit the way they did Doomsday in Batman v Superman. 
Yep. Very like bony and like all sorts yeah. of crazy shit going on. But uh, yeah, I'm sure they got plans for him. Uh, and yeah. that, you know, that was pretty much the episode, though. We did get some other stuff. A lot of stuff. I mean, I think her intro by the amio, uh, the uh, cameos was super cute. He was like, yeah, uh, you know, we don't we, we didn't plan to do this every episode. And then she was like, well, we kind of did because we had Abomination. And then we had mm-hmm. Wong the very next episode. Well, and go ahead. No, no, finish. Well, I was going to go to a to a separate point. You can go ahead. I was just going to say, that's why I'm a little confused. Normally, I have like a, I mean, not it's not like I have a special talent or anything, but they give you a pretty good sense of whether or not these cameos are going to lead to something else. Mm-hmm. But, but I can't really tell in this case because it's like, is it just to be a setup for like a fourth wall break joke or is it maybe both? I don't know. It's, right. it's, it's I'm having a little bit of a, a tough time deciphering that. During that news segment, they address all the anti woke idiots. Oh my god! In the actual show, and that shit was so funny. Yeah, I was. I got a good kick out of that one. Um, the little black dude was like, "I don't know about y'all, but I smash." And I was like, "Hell yeah!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no. the big ass suit on her looks terrible, dude. They need to fix that suit. I don't like it. I saw a couple of uh, of videos on YouTube where they were like making fun of that they said she looked like a kid like wearing their father's suit yeah straight up it's so bad like but i think that's oh. because doesn't she wear an oversized suit so she could like transform into it no i'm saying as she hulk she oh, has the big oh, suit oh, oh, and oh, it oh. looks super loose and like well there was the scene post her transformation where the suit is like big on her human body mm, and it I looked like a think. kid like wearing their father's suit that's funny that yeah they pulled out of the closet but I, I just think that she's wearing oversized shit because she knows she has to be in the office as She-Hulk. That's mm. like one of the prerequisites of her job there. They want her to be. Right. No, I agree with Marvin. I think when she was wearing the suit as She-Hulk, it did look a little weird. Yeah, it looks so loose. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Every every episode, I'm starting to see the uh, the CGI stand out. And I was seeing people like, like uh, bad in a bad way, right? Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. Well, yeah, because like at the end, the end credits, they should have just left the twerking out because <laughs> not funny. only is it fuel for the women haters, oh, I saw but it also just exposed how robotic the CGI was. Like that shit looked bad. The, that was the not, twerking. I didn't think it looked that bad. I thought it was it was looking really robotic and bad. I didn't think it was good. I saw a C- comment, CGI wise. I saw CGI-wise. a funny yeah. comment that said like, oh. She's complaining about being catcalled, yet she's twerking in an office with open windows and shit. It's like <laughs> open windows, a hundred fucking stories up. Yeah, that's that, cool. but that's the comment of like, oh, if women don't want to be hit on, then they shouldn't dress the way they dress. It's like, what? <laughs> okay. Uh yeah. No, the CGI standing out. So <laughs> in the first episode, I had said, like, oh, it's not that bad. But right. I, it wasn't. But I know we'll see. I think it, it was. It hasn't changed. I mean, it's the same. Yeah, it's just it wasn't uh, as in I, your face, like especially when she went on TV on news. He's just straight in your face, you know, front facing It's like, oh, this is real bad. But the reason being is because I think <clears throat> in the first episode, she was side by side with Bruce the whole time as Hulk. Yeah. So it's like two CGI characters next to each other. And obviously we talked about this comparatively, like yeah. Bruce's CGI is like way better, but due to more time and work on it and stuff like right. that over the course of a bunch of movies, hers yeah. is fresh, fresh out of the oven. Mm-hmm. But now seeing her stand side by side with like real people, mm-hmm. it's way more noticeable to me, which sounds silly, but I think th- seeing a CGI character in comparison to a human person is way more jarring than seeing two CGI characters next to each other for some reason. I don't know how that works. Mm, yeah. And I've mentioned this before, I, that. but like, you know, a lot of the CGI, namely Thanos, because I think his CGI was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Even standing side by side with human characters, like it was like super detailed, very, very impressive. Yeah. This mm-hmm. is like, I don't know, the, the, the flatness of it, the lack of detail in it seems to stand out a little bit more to me when she's standing yeah, side I, by side with real people. I don't know exactly why that is. Um, 
Like you would think standing next to the regular Hulk, you'd be like, oh, well, his CGI is way better than our CGI. But I think it's just the brain sort of just is like, oh, two cartoon characters. Like you don't even think about it. Right, yeah. But well, I'd be that makes sense. Sorry, go ahead. I'd be curious how many uh, different graphics departments that uh, Marvel has outsourced to for different scenes of the show. Like, is the same mm. is the same CGI group doing it all, or are they like farming it out? Because we've talked about Marvel having trouble with yeah, right. CGI this is one of those departments as well. So this is one of the ones where they fucking held the fire up on them. Like, you better get this shit out, and then this yeah. this is what we get. But you could tell, like, so her CGI is, like, not great. I think Abominations, like, you see him for, like, a second, but his isn't that great either. But yeah, the mm-hmm. portal that Wong opens was actually pretty good. It looked a lot like it looked in the uh, Doctor Strange movies. But, again, yeah. it's like those are assets that already exist. They, they already, just, yeah. got to drop just, them in. <laughs> so... You know, it's unfortunate, but, you know, we've seen this before and we talked about this. We've seen it in Black Panther and a couple of other things where there's like right. some moments of weaker CG. Uh, you know, and I saw yeah. somebody saying, too, in some comment section somewhere that like, oh, like, you know. I would be OK if like they delayed certain projects. Instead of rushing the CGI and stuff like that. Um I don't think it's that bad to where it's like distracting me or like nah. pulling me out of the show in any way. I still think the show is good and I like it. Uh, yeah. It's just now I'm starting to notice it more. And you know, she looks a lot like fucking what's her name from Shrek. And I can't unsee that now. The princess. Fiona. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's funny. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't think CGI is like a deal breaker for me unless it's really bad. Like talking like, which is funny Matrix you say that or something like it's not going to look that bad in in this day and age, right? No, but it's funny you say that because every time we watch an old movie, you're I like, use, fuck yeah. that shit was bad. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I don't, I don't say, know like modern CGI. It's like yeah, even when it's modern, bad, it's still it's good. acceptable. Yeah, that old that eighties shit <laughs> mm. <laughs> grind my gears. Um, there's a lot of funny little things in the in the uh, this episode though. Uh, it was one news segment they were talking about rumors she got rejected by the Avengers and I'm like where did that even come from just like yeah. another clickbait news <laughs> this, yeah, commentary on the clickbaity titles and yeah. headlines today yeah. basically. I thought that was actually pretty funny yeah it was because you know it's what Bruce was talking about with her it's like hey you're going to be having to deal with like all this shit they're going to be coming right. up names for you and stories and gossip and all this stuff yeah, and she goes on the like fucking uh, E or whatever, like equivalent, where she sits down with the guy, and he he asks her these questions, and then when they cut to the ad, he's like, "And when we get back, we're gonna talk about her exercise and fitness or whatever, her <laughs> diet or something." And she was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was a uh, another funny part of the show. I mean, this episode didn't really have too much going on in it, but one of the other funny, yeah. like, um, uh, I guess points of the episode was involved. The whole, yeah, go ahead. Drew Matthews, her old colleague, and he got himself into a relationship with a, fucking, yeah, dude, with an, with an Asgardian shapeshifter who was pretending so to be, funny. what was her name? Megan Thee Stallion. Megan Thee Stallion. I didn't even know she was a real person, so. Yeah, she's a rapper. Yeah, that song at she's the a, end she's is pretty, fucking fire. Pretty big rapper. I had no idea. Never heard of her before. <laughs> but uh, that was funny. And that guy, he's been like the topic of a lot of the commentary about like, look at how they're framing men in this show. It's like, dude, he's a cartoon <laughs> character. There's no, like, he's, it's funny. What do you mean? People get catfished all the time in no, real life. No, no, People had an issue with him in the first, how he was like, remember when he like, was like, oh, there's a women over there. I'm going to go talk to it. The toxic masculinity. Oh. Yeah, they're like, oh, men don't talk like that. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, but I Locker thought that was room funny. Talk. What do you mean? I thought it was funny how he has like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just locker room talk. I thought it was funny how he's like so fucking full of himself and narcissistic that he would actually believe that this famous rapper. Right. And that they use that as a, uh, yeah, they use that in court. Like they brought Jen in. <laughs> Yeah, her testimony. And that's what was got awesome. a, that's what got him off. That's what made him win the case. Yeah. It was and, funny. Uh the judge cuts her off. He's like, Thor's inspirational speeches are not admissible in court. I didn't get the reference though. Was it from the most recent movie or 
just it was in general from ragnarok oh okay um i think odin said it to odin thor said it to in thor. one of the movies and really thor, oh, okay. thor said it in um uh, ragnarok well oh, no okay. no odin says it to him in ragnarok mm. uh i Is don't right? recall if he says it i think he does say it in the latest one as well i can't remember we'll have to watch well we're gonna watch it again but um i've only it's, seen it's it a pretty one. like meme episode i think yeah but um, i think that's the nature of the show but yeah i mean i'm loving this show i think it's funny and i love the sick um format while also like keeping the relevancy of uh the show being within the mcu and cameos i think it's really well done so far at the end we got introduced to thunderball who the hell is thunderball the group of dudes at the end that were trying to get the blood sample from She Hulk. Oh, they called uh, the thugs that robbed. His name robbed is Thunderball. The, uh, yeah. Oh right. Yeah. I don't Asgardian know. Asgardian construction worker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, they're a group of um misfits. I think they work for Fisk from time to time. They said the boss. Of... They said the boss Rebels. was going to be mad. Yeah, we don't know who we don't oh. know if it's Fisk or who, but we know Daredevil's gonna show up. So yeah. I and mean, this is gonna be a show of cameos that create little <laughs> nuggets of story. Yeah. Right. Whether whether that whether that's gonna be used this year or five years from now, we're getting set up. But I think I mean, going back to what your point was, I thought this was really just a continuation of the main story. Uh it was relatively uneventful. There was some filler in there with the um <laughs> the the fairy but i thought you <laughs> right. know it's just she she's concluding the you know the abomination arc yeah and i think the next episode we get will be on to defending somebody else or fighting somebody else so I, we'll right. see i think the, makes sense, yeah i think the bulk of the show is going to be that like a procedural uh well where each yeah. episode might have or each few episodes might feature like a different case that she's working on mm-hmm. and and like dusty said like give you little nuggets of future stuff Right. Uh, interesting, though, that it's possibly Fisk, since there is the Daredevil connection. However, it could also be that they're working for uh, uh, Dreyfus. Yes. Mm. Uh, but yeah, we, st- we don't know who the boss is. It's all speculation at this point. Yeah. But no, this was a good episode. I'm, again, still looking forward to it. It hasn't really, again, it was a, it was a little bit more of a, like a there was less yeah stuff in this episode but it didn't really much action but yeah like, yeah i think it's okay because it's like it is a, still a sitcom so mm-hmm. i think the, the little action we get we got to kind of like cherish it and like yeah you know. i'm still in it though though speaking of the action that fight scene was <sighs> little cheesy little yeah, cheesy. that was pretty yeah i'm not with sure. her and the um yeah those thugs Thugs. Yeah, I it, thought it was a funny little take where, like, for a, a, a quick second, she was actually afraid because she forgot. That was funny. <laughs> yeah, that was wow. funny. <laughs> that She's was. Like, funny. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait a second. Uh, yeah. That that was good. Except it felt a lot like a fight scene in like the seventies Hulk with Lou Ferrigno, kind of like done in that <laughs> done in that way where you like have no fucking real budget to do anything cool. Yeah. She's just like tossing them in like weird ways, like moving like Herman Munster and shit. <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe they did that on purpose. We'll see. Uh, right. But yeah. So as of right now, I have no idea where this show is going, but I'm still on board. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Do you think this actually ends the uh, abomination that we're going to see or do we see him more? I mean, it could, except he's a big character. And I think people already felt like he was sort of utilized poorly in the first Hulk. And that was like the last you heard of him. So, again, I still think he's going to end up on the Thunderbolts in some shape or form. Uh, yeah, we'll see more of him. I mean, it's that's somewhere down the line. Also, right. to, to build on that, like there's not many villains that we've seen in the MCU that could even qualify for the Thunderbolts, really. They're not going to. Oh, that, is that how them. bad they are? They're not. They're more like the Suicide Squad. They're like anti-hero. Oh. So it's mm-hmm. like it's like people that are like kind of borderline. Six episodes left, and as I said, I'm still I'm still on board. It hasn't really done anything that has m- driven me away just yet. I think it's gonna be hilarious when people start making their videos about the wokeness of this episode, improving the point of what they portrayed in this episode. They're That'd already out there. Literally, if you just type in like She Hulk, it's already review, out there. Every one of them is like 
a bad. We're probably the only people on the internet talking good about this show at this point. <laughs> it's got a five point yeah, one on IMDb. Time. I don't know. You got to just block out the noise. Yeah, you do. Two episodes in. Trying to cash in on this anti woke uh, surgeons and content. But uh, there you have it, folks. There's our thoughts on She Hulk episode three. The people versus Emil Blonsky, not the bullshit I said earlier on. Let us know what you thought. Not one dot three. Not one dot three. Let us know what you thought of this episode in the comments. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. And you can also check us out on our website, harshlanguage.tv, where you can find our latest podcast episodes, YouTube videos, and some news that's put together by that guy over there. Dusty. We'll catch you in the next one, folks. Dusty. See ya.